In this video, we're going to look at our first generalization of a simple functional. So in this instance, we're going to look at multiple independent variables. So we'll keep it down to the independent variables to be two. OK, so the Q1 and Q2 are generalized coordinates. So we'll have a function of the form of Q1, Q2, and Q1 derived of Q2 derivative, and it's a function of, of time. So I'm not going to go through all the details here of how we go through the derivation to get to the Euler Lagrange. If you're interested, it's in uh, video number 28 in the first series on the calculus of variations. So you'll be able to get that just up here if you click on that now. So it means that if we're looking at the first variation, we're going to take the derivative of this function here with, the with respect to our, our value epsilon. So we're going to have our uh, partial f by partial q1, partial q1 by partial epsilon, and the same for the second for the, the derivative q dot and q dot there. Okay, so now um, if we then replace this uh, partial q1 by partial epsilon 1 with our eta 1 and our eta derivative 1, again, if you're unsure of that, it's all in video number 28, you'll see it uh, done down there in, in full detail. So we can do the same again for our second independent variable, which is our Q2. So we just work through the exact same thing for Q2. And then we get through the process of integration by parts. Again, check video 28, you'll see this done in, in full detail. Now we get through the integration by parts on this. So we leave this term as is, and we integrate this term here by parts and you can see why we do that for integration this term by parts this eta derivative just becomes an, a value of eta and then we can take out a common factor of eta for both of those and with inside the brackets we'll be left with just a Euler Lagrange equation here so one thing to note here is that we can make an assumption that our value for eta for the first the variation for the first independent variable is the same as the value of eta for the variation for the second independent variable. So we're going to be left with Euler-Lagrange written out twice, one for each of the independent variables, q1 and q2. So in general, if we were to write out this, find the, the functional in terms of uh, a, a value uh, qn to qm, and if it's if it's stationary, then for weak variations, we're going to have this form of the Euler-Lagrange equation here, okay, where the value of n ranges from, uh, I should actually say n ranges, I think it's from 1 onwards, okay, so I'll change that, 1, 2, 3 up to infinity, okay, so that's the, the general uh, type of equation for this type of functional. Okay, so that's all there is for this. And uh, the next video we'll go and we'll cover uh, the second variation of this type of integral. And then we'll move on. We'll look at the conjugate points on this type of functional. Okay, so thank you for listening and goodbye.